Well, hello, my friends. I am Matt Williamson. How's everyone doing? Good. Good to hear. All right. So, a little bit of carryover from last night's or from the last game. I just have two little nuggets. John Mechie with the Texans is rumored to be available at the wide receiver position. That is someone I would absolutely have interest in. Maybe we'll dig into that later in the week if there's any truth to that, or maybe the Steelers get involved. But I mentioned a couple, and but what we're going to do today, I just opened with this, is I built Williamson's 53-man roster. So cuts are Tuesday at four. These are the 53 gentlemen I would keep as Steelers open their deal. Um, get to them in a minute, but here's the stuff we had from uh, just some usage nuggets from the preseason. With the snaps Russell Wilson was in the game, Van Jefferson ran a route on 93% of the dropbacks in the preseason. He's the two, you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's that clear. However, Roman Wilson is still in the equation, so he should be at least thrown out there. But I just wanted to let you know, 93% of the routes when Wilson was out there, Van Jefferson was out there. But this Friar move stuff's a little odd too. So in terms of route participation in week three, when Wilson was on the field, he only ran a route on 50% of Wilson's dropbacks. And for the season or the preseason, Friar Muth only ran sixty ran a route on sixty percent of Wilson's dropbacks. Darnell Washington, on the other hand, he played every snap. Wilson was out there. Washington was out there. I'm not implying that Washington's ahead of Friar Muth, but their usage is alarming slash raise an eyebrow too. I mean, let's just do that. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. From the preseason NFL to college kicking off, Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. Think you know your stuff? Get in on our winner take all 300 grand NFL survivor pool for the upcoming season. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on the game of blackjack, poker, or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Go to the website today and use the promo code BLEAV, B L E A V, all caps, and get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. All right. So what I did was I just grabbed a spreadsheet and filled out 53 lines and went right down there and decide who who I'm keeping. A lot of this is going to be obvious, of course. Starting with the quarterbacks, I'm keeping Wilson, Fields, and Allen. And they're going to keep three. That's a, a, a franchise thing. I would absolutely like to get Plumlee back here and in camp next year. The running backs I'm keeping, only three, because none of them are great on special teams. Najee, Warren, who I expect to be ready in week one, Cordero Patterson. But I am keeping Coletto, the fullback. Saw enough special teams usage to think that he can contribute there. I saw an awful lot of snaps on offense in camp with him on the field. I'd hate to throw all that away, and I don't think Connor Hayward can do it to the degree, the the lead-blocking ISO stuff, to the degree that Coletto can. Who's not Lorenzo Neal or Dan Kreider, but he's, you know, a downhill hammer. I kept five receivers, but really wish one of them had Boykin-like special teams qualities. Of course, Pickens, Jefferson, who I mentioned, Austin as your slot, slash three, Miller, and Roman Wilson. Looks like Wilson won't need to go on pop or anything like that, but I guess there is a to-be-determined factor in that. I wouldn't mind Miller turning into Mechie or Ayuk or something like that, though. I mean, think about that group. If you're for Miller, you cut him, and you add someone that's a legit dude. I mean, now you're, now you're cooking. I did keep four tight ends, which I think they will do, which I didn't think in the year 2024, if you'd asked me five years ago, would the Steelers keep four tight ends in a fullback? 
But that's the offense are running, and I'm a fan of it. And there is some special team qualities with these guys, but it's Fryermuth, Washington, Hayward, Pruitt. I went with nine offensive linemen. It would have been hard to make cuts if Herbig were healthy. But of course, the two last two first round picks, Dan Moore, Daniels, Siamalu, Frazier, Anderson, McCormick, who's getting worked more at center. I think Anderson will see some center snaps too. And I kept Dylan Cook, who's been okay. I still have some hope for him. I don't think he's ever going to be a superstar. But pure tackles is what he had going for him. I mean, the fact that he is a pure tackle gives me some value with him. They're hard to find. I don't want to go shopping on the open market for one. As for the D-line, of course, Hayward, Benton, Ogan Joby, Adams, Lowry, and Loudermilk. Now, there's a couple of these guys, Loudermilk, um, Michael Pruitt, Miller, maybe Coletto. Like, it wouldn't break my heart if they're not Steelers. I'm not standing on the table for any of these guys. The last couple spots on this roster, to me, are a little soft. And then I put Leal down, but I'm calling him a D-line slash OLB because I'm only keeping three outside linebackers. I'm keeping Watt, Highsmith, Herbig, and Leal's out there. I mean, the the moons of the world and some of those guys, I definitely want to get on the uh, the practice squad. But for now, I'm keeping three pure edge guys, and Leal's capability makes that a little easier. An inside linebacker, it's Queen, it's Wilson, it's Roberts, of course. Matikavich, I think, is a shoe in But that's it for me. And I know that's a little light because I don't want Matikavich out there. So those three are going to play all my inside linebacker snaps. But you also have Holcomb at some point. You know what I mean? And I don't think Robinson was a good enough special teamer. He was probably my final cut. I mean, if you told me you wanted to keep him over Loudermilk or one of these defensive backs I'm going to end the show with, I would understand it. But I'm kind of done with him, to be honest with you. I mean, I just have seen enough and I think we know what he is. I did keep five safeties, which is also special teams driven. Minka, of course. Elliot, of course. KZ. Killebrew. And Watts. I don't know anything new on the injury front, unfortunately, and for a couple of these guys. So maybe somebody like Watts would start the season on pop and isn't ready to go. And then Mark Robinson would take his spot or something like that. So I'm doing this without intense medical knowledge of some of these guys. So that's five safeties. And then I kept six corners. Porter, Jackson, Trice, Rush, Bishop, and Graham. And if both those two disappeared for a five-year slot veteran type guy, I could live with it. You know, like those six corners, two of them are inactive on game day. I don't love that. I mean, I guess is my bottom line. I don't love Bishop and Graham in Rush is fine, but the rest of them are, yeah, I mean, I think you're going, you know where I'm going with that. Like, they're not great NFL players. And then three specialists, Boswell, Johnston, Koontz. So that gets you to 53. Um, there's three or four on there I could do without. You know what I mean? Like, I, I told you this yesterday. I urged you to put your 53 together. If I'm missing somebody, please let me know. I wouldn't have a hard time getting rid of one or two of these names, especially if there's, you know, a practice squad guy you want to snag or whatever. I mean, maybe you, I, I get the, put it mildly. I, I get the hunch that whoever number 53 is on this team might not be employed by the Steelers long. You know, you, it's a brutal situation. Like you, you make the team, you celebrate with your family and friends or whatever. And two days later, if you're number 53, which they don't tell you you're 53, you often get the call that, yep, oh, now you're gone. You know, all right, folks, that's my 53 man roster. If I was in charge, there's a handful of stuff that I don't adore with the bottom, bottom, bottom of this roster, but they'll, they'll churn through that. And Omar's done a really good job with you know, moving those things around, you know, and churning the bottom of his roster. All right. Take care.